Hi guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my entire iPhone repair setup. This includes uh, the desk as well as my iPhone parts collection and how I organize things and how I repair phones. It all starts with underneath my desk I have a USB hub, a uh, powered USB hub underneath the desk which allows me to connect my phones to them and have them easily accessible from the front of my desk where I can charge them. This USB hub is connected to my MacBook Pro and I connect up a, a lightning and 30 pin cable. Here there are they're zip tied together so I can't lose them um, but I can connect up to four uh, iPhones all at once and have them connected to my computer as well as charging via an iPad charger so they charge fast as well as come up on my computer. Now I have a massive collection of iPhone parts. Um, some of these I brought, some of these I've just parted out things or just had spare parts laying around. But starting off, we have my first and original uh, screwdriver kit, which I got when I was eight. And I use this for repairing computers mostly because they include a lot of the bigger tools um, used in computers and uh, TVs and things like that if I'm, if I'm pulling apart something like that. But I just picked up this iFixit toolkit, which uh, is mainly for small electronics like phones and things. It has the pentalobe drivers, it has standoff bits as well for those iPhones and standoff bits it's absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to get using this in some of my later videos I have been using these cheapo um, tools that come with cheap screens I mean they get the job done if you're doing a once-off thing but uh, I repair a lot of phones for myself I don't own a repair shop but this is just my home collection of, of repairing tools and things but you can see here I have a full tub of screws which are mostly just from um, computers and things I've parted out and then got rid of. Underneath that I have a toolbox which has just got a lot of the prying tools, tweezers, uh, a permanent marker, suction cups, sim eject tools, things like that in there that are required in an iPhone repair that aren't in the iFixit toolkit that I have. Underneath that I have all my USBs and SD cards um, which I keep in that tub. Underneath that I have my miscellaneous iPhone screws as well as water indicator sensors are in there as well for iPhones and then underneath that I just have an empty tub which I might end up putting something in. The tubs behind that have a lot more iPhone parts in them. They have dock connectors, batteries, uh, the volume control, um, flex cables, SIM cards, SIM card trays, um, cameras, you name it, uh, small iPhone parts go in that tub. Uh, this bigger tub underneath has all of my iPhone screens from the iPhone 3G all the way to the 6S. There's screens in there. All of them are cracked, but they're good test screens that I test out on phones um, before I go ahead and buy a new screen for them. Underneath that, I have all of my Apple adapters, including uh, USB to Ethernet, just the duct heads, as well as uh, display cables as well for MacBooks. This massive tub here is full of RAM. Um, I got most of this RAM from school because I was getting rid of it all. It's DDR1, 2, 3 uh, in various sizes as well as some Mac Pro RAM which is like server grade uh, memory. It also has lots of sodiums and a couple of hard drives in there as well. The box underneath that is full mostly of cases um, but also consists of a lot of iPhone 3G and 3GS digitizers which I got in a lot of parts as well. On the top shelf, you'll find a few bot more plastic boxes. These ones are all filled with dock connectors, uh, ranging from the iPhone first generation all the way up to the iPhone 6. Some of them are new, some of them are used, some of them um, may not work, I'm not too sure. Underneath that, I have all of my plastic screen protectors. Now, my glass screen protectors are kept in with the iPhone screens, um, which I showed you the cracked iPhone screens that I used to testing. But this box is full of my plastic ones and has all of the screen cloths and everything in there. They range from the iPhone uh, 3G all the way up to the iPhone 5 in plastic screen protectors. The box underneath that is filled with the generic tools you get in cheap screens. I have lots of them, um, but I don't use them anymore. I just mainly use the spudges and things that come out of those. As you can see here, I have a heap of iPhone 3G 8GB housings, mostly in white, but I also have a couple of black ones as well. And up there, along with those, is my 2012 Mac Mini with an i5 and 4 gigs of RAM. I did have more, but I have downgraded it because I use the RAM for something else. In the middle, you'll find a ThinkPad along with two pre-unibody MacBooks from 2008. I got all these computers from school and I use the ThinkPad for uh, iOS tools that aren't available on macOS and I use the one underneath that, the MacBook, for just random things and the bottom one actually has a faulty MagSafe port so that doesn't really work very well. But on the other side of those, I also have a battery charging for batteries that aren't in iPhones as well as just some miscellaneous parts for MacBooks and things like that. 
Moving along to the apps that help with repairing iPhones or testing iPhones, the first one we're going to take a look at here is called Coconut Battery, uh, and it will tell you the model of your iPhone, the, sto the storage, the iOS version, as well as the battery health and cycle count. Now, this does work with MacBooks as well, um, but I mainly use it for testing iPhones. This does work on iCloud locked iPhones, so you can go ahead and test out those as well. The next app is called Apple Configurator 2. It's available on the Mac App Store and it's designed for enterprises and schools uh, to pair all their phones and have everything exactly the same, but you can use it uh, to change certain settings in iCloud locked iPhones. For instance, this is an iCloud locked iPhone 5 64 gig on iOS 10.0.1. Now you can see a heap of information that you wouldn't be able to see uh, with a iCloud lock device. So you can go ahead and actually change the device name. This is the, pretty much the only way of actually writing a message to the iCloud account. They won't get notified of this, but it will show up in iTunes as well as on their Apple ID. So if they happen to log in to find my iPhone, they will see the message that the name is called. So I named this one, please remove this phone from your account. And with maybe a bit of luck, you might actually get it unlocked. Now it doesn't work with iOS and six or below so you need ios 7 and above to use apple configurator 2. the next app i use is called backup bot it allows you to enter backups just like iExplorer, which we're going to take a look at as well um, but it lets you modify system files and things like that and see recent emails from email accounts that have been deleted from the phone so that might be helpful in unlocking iphones if they're linked to an icloud account and you purchase them through ebay or something like that iExplorer is a pretty much a similar version it's a little bit more um, stable as well so i recommend getting that one as well Another great tool for macOS is called Red Snow. It allows you to uh, do a heap of things, but mainly I use it for SSH blobs. If you want to know how to save SSH blobs and all about SSH blobs, go ahead and check out. Uh, two weeks ago, I made a video on that, so link for that will be down in the description. Another app I use is called Tiny Umbrella, and if you can get a working version, this is a great app to have. You can see here it will download your SSH blobs from Cydia, as well as your latest blobs. But this only works on 32-bit devices, so it's uh, not very important uh, these days. But if you have blobs on Cydia, it's always a good uh, tool to download them onto your Mac. Now, if you have Windows, uh, you can do a lot of these in one app. It's called 3U Tools. Link will be down in the description, um, and it will tell you just about everything uh, your device. It'll tell you when it was made, where it was um, purchased, and a heap of other things. You can jailbreak it. It has all the jailbreaking tools. You can restore. You can do just about anything you want with your iPhone with 3U tools. It's a great app, and I really wish there was a macOS version. You can see you can jailbreak. You can download your SHSH probs. You can upload them. Um, you can retrieve your password if it's um, an older device running a very old version of iOS, which is unlikely these days, but you know, it it's a pretty cool thing in case you have an old iPhone with a passcode on it or something like that. But there's a heap of tools in this that I can't go over in this video, but definitely download it if you have a PC. And this is really all I use the ThinkPad for is just a lot of these apps that don't work on Mac OS um, because this computer is not very powerful, but you can see here, it's uh, great for these kinds of tools. Another app I recommend downloading is called Behind. It's very buggy and crashes a lot, but you can save your SSH blobs with that and use them to upload to Cydia. Another app is called iFaith. It's for dumping SSH blobs on the iPhone 4 and below. So if you have an iPhone 4 and an older version, you can save your blobs to your computer in case you ever uh, mark up the iOS version. Now, I've got a whole video, like I said just before, uh, on how to save SSH blobs. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in saving SSH blobs. Now, what I do with all my SSH blobs is I keep, keep them on uh, iCloud Drive. Now, on iCloud Drive, I also have my iOS device information list, which has all of my iPhones listed, as well as their what iPhone it is, the color, the size, as well as the iOS version. In there, I have the serial, the IMEI, and the ECID. Now, the reason I do this for all of my iPhones is when Apple... Um, was signing all the firmwares, I was actually on holidays and I missed out because I didn't have any of the ECIDs of my iPhones. So as soon as I got home, I went ahead and put them all onto my iCloud drive. So if it ever happens again, and no matter where I am, I will have my ECIDs and all of my information about my iPhones without actually having them on me. Um, another thing I have on here is SSH saving tools, um, as well as my SSH blobs. I have them categorized in iPhone, iPod, and iPad, and then I have them in generation of iPhone, and then we'll have the device in there, usually with the ECID on the end of the name, so SE, Rose Gold, 16 gig, and then the ECID, and then I'll have the SSH blobs in there. And I've done that with all of my iPhones, which allows me to keep them in a nice, safe spot. And that is pretty much everything to know about my entire set up when I repair iPhones, the apps I use, 
the tools I use and where and how many parts I actually own. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you're not already subscribed, go and hit that subscribe button and check out the iPhone playlist for more videos just like this one.